Hello everyone, this is the first episode in a new tutorial series. In this series we will be creating an entire game from start to finish. The goal here is to use Zelda Breath of the Wild as an inspiration for our low poly adventure made with Game Creator. We are going to split this up in a so far unknown amount of parts, but the goal is to cover everything. From gameplay mechanics, to UIs, terrains, lighting, you name it. Every video will have the assets that are used in the description. In this first video we are going to start with the basics and setting up our character with the melee module. Before we start I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. This scene will be made available on Patreon as it gets updated. Now in order to create this series I will be using Game Creator and well all of these modules. Now obviously you don't need to use all of that if you don't want to, but in order to create something as complex as what we can see in Breath of the Wild, I will definitely be using all of these. I will start my focus with Game Creator and the Melee module, and as we expand our mechanics we will dip more and more into other modules as well. Now this will include some of the unofficial modules as well, simply because some of them really make it that much easier to get the look and feel and the behavior of what we see in Breath of the Wild. In order to get the correct look, I'm going to use this fantastic fantasy mega bundle sale Unity has on right now. Honestly, it's just a great price to get a lot and lot of assets thought this was the easiest way for everyone to be able to follow along and get a really good deal on just an amazing amount of assets. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. Now obviously you don't need to have any of this and you can just follow along with your own assets but this is what I'll be using for the series. Now we are starting our scene from scratch so for now I'm just going to add a plane and we'll be creating a terrain at some point as well of course. So this is just a temporary ground for us in order to make sure we don't actually fall. And let's create our character. There we go. And the last thing we need to add is our camera motor. So I'm going to drag this up. One tip, make sure the camera motor is never a child of anything else. It may cause strange behavior. Now in our camera motor we are going to set up the correct look and definitely experiment with this and see what works for you. But I'm going to go with a set of actions here a uh, set of settings and I'll explain why as well so if we hit play now this is the look and feel it gives us so it allows us to rotate and the character is exactly in the middle we can zoom in and out now in Zelda Breath of the Wild this is not the case this is not the look we have just like in most third person games we have an offset to the left we have a camera that constantly rotates and follows along in order to make sure we don't well don't get this look basically so we are going to make some changes here now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a slight offset And I'm going to pivot this offset as well. I will not allow for mouse move to alter the camera movement as this is something that is not present in the game. And another reason for that is because I will not allow zoom either. I'm going to zoom out a bit more though so get a bit more distance so we can see more of the game. And I'm going to change the behavior of the repositioning. So it won't be instant, but it will be really fast. So if we hit play again, we will see that the camera rotates with the player really fast. Not instantaneous, so there's definitely some time for us to check the sides, 
but it will retarget into position really really fast now if you want this to be even faster just alter some of these settings but this is for now anyway the look and feel I'll go with this might change at some point of course as this is something we can easily change around now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that our player has running disabled by default so if you notice while he was running around there was no walking it was just straight into running so we're going to turn that off and we're going to add the character melee component this is needed in order to interact with the melee module so we have that added and I'm going to put all of the player interactions on the player itself so I'm going to start by naming them all so let's just equip our weapon let's do one for combat and we add one for movement now movement will allow us to manually control running for example and combat will allow us to well use combat and equipping will be for equipping now some of these things will definitely change over the course of the series but we need to have something to start with so we'll be setting all of this up and i'm going to house all of these actions under the player in order to make it easy to track everything we have in our scene now let's actually start off with equipping our weapon so i'm going to add a trigger this will be on key down and it will have a condition I'm going to do the same here for combat And we're going to do something similar but this will be two triggers for movement and this will be for running so we're going to do on key hold and on timeout and on key hold and on key up let's add these actions as well now let's start off with setting up equipping so the condition here is that I want one button to equip and unequip our weapon. I don't want this to be a separate button. So we are going to do the condition will be melee is armed. So if he's already armed, then we are going to go into melee and we are going to sheet the weapon if he's not armed yet so that's the else category we are going to draw the weapon now we will be creating these weapons as well of course but this these are the interactions so one button that does it all now we haven't set this button up yet and i'm going to go with a layout trying to be similar a bit to what Zelda Breath of the Wild is doing so on the keyboard I will be using W A S D for movement and I'll be using 4 8 5 6 as if they were the keys on the Nintendo Switch so the Y X A etc so for equipping our weapon that would be normally done with the d-pad now that's something we don't have and would be a bit too complex to try to simulate as well so I'm going to use the really straightforward option which is the E as this is something that is located next to the movement keys so this will draw a weapon and for combat we are going to mimic the same look and feel so the five would be similar to the y 
on the switch. And this will be a really simple action, which is input melee attack. So this is the default really basic combo, which is what we'll keep for now and we'll elaborate on that further. And then for movement, we have these sets of actions and what we are going to set up here is a really simple change property. Player can run yes. And if we let go, so let's actually copy that over. We won't be able to run. Now, by default, running is turned off, so it can only be turned on if we hold this button. And this should be five, actually. And I made a mistake here with combat. This should be four. Sorry about that. So with five, we'll be able to run. So we need to make sure this is also five. And there we have it. So running is turned off by default, but holding five will allow us to run. And if we let go of that key, we will stop running. Now we don't have anything to equip yet. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to look for a sword weapon. That is the default name of the sword that is available in the melee module. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to rename it to main sword. So it will disappear here. And this is the default prefab being used for sword weapon. I'm going to duplicate that as well. And I'm going to rename that also to main sword. Now let's change this search to main sword. There we go. Let's make sure this is dragged in. And let's actually set that up. So here we have our default weapon and we're going to go with one of our downloaded assets here to change the look. Models and we're going to drag in the sword. And let me do that again and actually grab the prefab. There we go. Perfect. Let's reposition that. There we go. Now I'm going to keep this as it is and I'm going to remove the current, the old model and ju we're just going to keep our existing one. Now we need to make the hit area quite a bit smaller here as this is just way, way, way too big. And a couple of settings that worked for me would be to change this to 0 0.5, change this to 0 0.9, and there we go. And that's it. That's our box set up and our weapon set up. Now let's make sure our character actually draws that weapon. And we have our main sword. We're going to look into the shield in a later video as we'll be doing quite some different things with the shield in order to get it all working. So let's just start with the basics and see what this looks like. So we have a new camera that behaves differently. If we press E, we'll equip our weapon and it looks good. I'm going to press E again and it will go away. And let's hit four to start our attack. Now, as you can see, it only does one attack and it doesn't do the entire combo. I'm going to fix that as well. 
and if we hold five we'll run and if we let go of five we'll go back to walking so yeah pretty cool Now the reason for the weapon only doing one part of the combo is because these were turned off and we're just turning them on. So that is on the main sword. So really simple change. Now let's add our character and this will have an interesting result with our melee weapon. We are using one of the really popular Sinti assets. For our character, I'm going to go with the Rogue. It's a pretty decent looking character. And let's drag that in. There we go. So yeah, pretty cool. Now you will notice a problem straight away if we unsheet our weapon. The sword is going the wrong way. He's not holding it the right way either. As you can see, it doesn't really fit in his hand. And yeah, the weapon should be rotated the other way around. Now the reason for this, and this has nothing to do with the way Game Creator really works, this has to do with Synthi assets having less bones in their hand. And that's something we can luckily adjust pretty easy. So if we go to our weapon again so let's go to equip go to our weapon and you will see these offset options now I've already experimented in trying to find something that works so obviously I'll be doing that straight away and we are going to press this so I need to rotate the weapon um, a complete 180 degrees wasn't a good fit either and we needed to make sure it fit in the hand properly so that's why we have these offsets and yeah definitely give these settings a try if we go back into play mode right now and we press E you'll see that it fits in the hand pretty well now this could be better but it's, it's pretty good it's pretty good maybe add some rotation but I think it's a pretty good fit so if we go back into our play mode and we hit 4 you'll see that it all works perfectly fine so yeah a couple of small changes in order to make it work with Sinti assets but that's really it so that was it for this video I'm going to keep it all relatively small parts so it's easy to follow along and yeah this is the first basic step so we've set up our character we set up our basic sword and some basic actions so I hope you enjoyed this if you did please hit like and subscribe and I will see you for the next part